Deepti Kalaj with me on the set to take a look at what the papers have been saying today. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Jeannie. You're going to start with those tensions on the Greek border after Turkey decided to open its borders with Europe to migrants. That's right. Those tensions really playing out in the Greek and Turkish papers as well. Let's start with the Greek paper. The uh, Kathy Marini, the Greek Daily, accusing the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan today of blackmail and of trying to use the refugees as a weapon against Greece. Uh, the paper also taking aim at European leaders, calling on them to prove that, I quote, Greece is not just a mere bulwark being paid to keep the migrants at bay. Now, from the Turkish papers, Gini, um, they're, uh, meanwhile, reprinting a, a screen grab of a video shown in Ankara yesterday showing Greek coast, coast guards firing shots into the water near an inflatable vessel packed with asylum seekers. Uh, Greek authorities, for their part, deny trying to sink the dinghy. And you can see that picture there at the bottom left of your screen. Now, those tensions, of course, are also dominating the European papers. Of course, uh, the British Daily, The Independent, focusing on migrants on its front page today. Uh, migrants being tear gassed on the Greek border. A picture of that is uh, on the front page of The Independent. Uh, El País, the Spanish Daily, evokes what it calls high tensions on the Turco-Greek border, notably on the island of Lesbos, where this front page picture was taken of a young refugee being escorted by police on a terribly overcrowded Moria camp. The French daily Le Parisien calls it the Syrian refugee saga on Europe's doorstep. Uh, and the Italian paper Il Manifesto refers to the island of Lesbos as an island of hell where migrants not only confront security forces, but also face the hostility of locals there. There's lots in the papers today, too, Deep T, in the United States about uh, the Super Tuesday voting that's happening today. Joe Biden, the former vice president, got a huge boost going into that vote. And for one New York Times writer, Jeannie, it's clear now that the Democratic Party's choice is either between Biden or Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders or jo Joe Biden. P Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar both abandoned their own campaigns to throw their support behind Biden, the former vice president. Uh, he's taking advantage of uh, the lack of popularity perhaps of his lesser known rivals but also his pitch his pitch rather as a more moderate alternative to Sanders but in any case for this writer from the New York Times uh, it is it will come down to these two men uh, it leaves the Democrats are in a tricky position uh, as uh, Dave Grunland for USA Today depicts in his cartoon here the Democrat Democrats trying to ride two different cars going in opposite directions um, a Politico uh, also has a really interesting article about Joe Biden's comeback and how astonishing it is is, um, they're basically running this article uh, talking about how it all began with his land landslide win in South Carolina, but also aided by his popularity with the African-American voters. So it's well worth a read as well. Now, you've got a great story about a young woman who qualified for the U.S. Olympic team on her first marathon trial. That's right. Molly uh, Seidel, she has two jobs. She lives in a Boston apartment with her sister. She loves to run races in costume. She's basically your normal 25-year-old. Uh, she ha also happens to have just qualified for the U.S. women's Olympic team uh, in her first marathon ever uh, at the Olympic trials held in Atlanta on the weekend. She came uh, overcame strong headwinds and a hilly course, finishing second place. Um, she also says she's uh, overcome uh, disordered eating uh, in the in the past and numerous injuries. Um, so basically, she's heading to Tokyo this summer with the Olympic team. It's an incredible story. That's fantastic. All right, here in Paris, uh, we are in the throes of Fashion Week at the moment, and Stella McCartney's show just yesterday has everybody talking. That's right. Two rabbits, a fox, a horse, two cows, and a crocodile all featured in her show. As you can see, though, they were... Uh, <laughs> dress up uh, costumes none of the animals were real uh, a fun way of driving home a very serious message Stella McCartney tells the Guardian that animals may be the ingredients of other fashion houses but not at her fashion house um, since launching in 2001 she has made it a really a cornerstone of her work to avoid using a leather, fur, skins, feathers, uh, anything uh, of an animal base, rather um, investing in alternatives. And just to wrap up now, staying with the fashion theme, one British comedian has gone to very extreme measures to protest Hugo Boss. That's right. It's, it's a very weird story, but it's very funny, especially if you know this British comedian. His name is Joe Lysett. Um, he's legally changed his name to Hugo Boss in protest at what he says are the aggressive ways of Hugo Boss 
Ross in protecting its trademark name. Basically, uh, the fashion house has uh, apparently targeted small companies and charities in the past that ha ha that use the word boss in their name, forcing them through aggressive legal proceedings to rebrand and, and pay exorbitant fees. Um, so uh, Joe Lysett, a.k.a. Hugo Boss, uh, <laughs> has now been tweeting nonsensically as Hugo Boss in a bit of civil disobedience. So um, he posted this one. Um, Hugo Boss always asks what percentage you are on before he lets you borrow his charger. <laughs> or Hugo Boss microwaves fish in the office. So it's just random things he's been tweeting as Hugo Boss. Um, the Fashion House, by the way, responded saying it welcomed Lysette as a member of the Hugo Boss family. <laughs> Deep tea, thanks for that. Deep tea, go along with that look at what the papers have been saying today. Don't forget, you can check it out again if you like on our website. The address is France24.com.